ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಾತ್ರಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯ ಮೇಲೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಯಾವೃತ್ತಿರ್ಮನಸಿ ಮನಸಾ ಜಾಯತ ಸಂಸ್ಮೃತಿಸ್ತೆ ಯೋ ಯೋ ಜಲ್ಪ ಸಭವತು ವಿಭೋ ನಾಮ ಸಂಕೀರ್ತನಂತೆ ಯಾಚೇಷ್ಟಾವಪುಷಿ ಭಗವನ್ ಸಾ ಭವೇತ್ ವಂದನಂತೆ ಸರ್ವಂ ಭೂಯಾದ್ವರವರ ಮುನೆ ಸಮ್ಯಕಾರಾಧನಂತೆ so until now we have <coughs> covered the commentary of the second sutra and now we proceed to the third sutra before that <coughs> certain issues that are remaining to be explained in the second sutra shall be explained so it was mentioned that ಅದಿಲ್ ಪ್ರಥಮ ರಹಸ್ಯ ತಿರುಮಂತ್ರೇರ್ ದಿಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಸೊ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದೆನ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ತ್ರೀ ರಹಸ್ಯ ದಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ರಹಸ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ತಿರುಮಂತ್ರ ಸೊ ದಿ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ದಟ್ ಅರೈಸಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವೈ ಇಸ್ ತಿರುಮಂತ್ರ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡೆಡ್ ಆರ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡೆಡ್ ಟಾಪ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರಯಾರಿಟಿ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದಿ ತ್ರೀ ಆಸ್ ಐ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ as per the commentary of pranavana mahamuni it says firstly tirumantram is the mantra that provides comprehensive information about swaswarupa on so the original nature and secondly it provides complete information about the tyajya and upadeya aspects to be given up and imbibed respectively and <clears throat> i will come to that later as far as the swaswarupa is concerned it is to be known that it is ananya arhatvam ananya sharanatvam and ananya bhogyatvam these are the three components that are involved which help a person or individual soul realize his original nature so the mantra that helps a person realize his original nature consisting of these three components is the mantra so unless a person knows about himself he will not be able to proceed further in the sense suppose i will i generally give an example is it possible for me to win the wimbledon tennis title now the answer is no because if you have to start to aspire for winning the wimbledon title then probably you have to have start training with a professional coach probably when you are about 3 or 4 years old or 5 years old and you have to win so many tournaments and you have to become a member of the professional tennis association or whatever it is which is not very much relevant now but you have to start at a very young age and train with the best coaches and you also have to have inherent talent 
and you have to put in a lot of hard work, probably you have to train for six to eight hours or 10 hours a day and do all those things. And then you will know <clears throat> whether you are ready and whether you can qualify and so on. So Swaswarupa Jnana is very much important for every aspect in life, not only for attaining moksha or liberation, it is very much necessary for all the things that a person wants to do. Suppose even if I want to study at Harvard or if I want to study at Oxford, then there are certain procedures or even if I want to go to the US and study a master's degree there, so there are certain procedures I should be, I should pass the GRE exam and then I should, there is a TOEFL test or something like that and so many things are there. So first I should <clears throat> make sure that I know what my capabilities are. And unless a person knows he is well informed and correctly informed about his own capabilities, he cannot do anything. He cannot proceed further. So Swaswarupa Jnana is one of the most, most important aspects with regard to all aspects in life, especially a person who attains to, who wishes to attain liberation. And that Swaswarupa Jnana is enumerated by these three components mainly, namely Ananya Arahattam, Ananya Sharanattam and Ananya Bhogjattam. So unless a person, in the beginning it is not possible for him to realize this, but at least he should understand and accept that he, he will in due course realize and he is of this nature. So these three aspects are mentioned, which are part of the Swaswarupa are mentioned by the Tirumantra or the Ashtakshira Mahamantra and therefore it has been mentioned in the beginning. Further, Swami Manavan Mamani gives a very important explanation regarding why Tirumantra is provided topmost priority in the sense it is, it is mentioned first among the three Rahasyas. So Swami Manavala Mamani says, the, as I mentioned in my previous class, the Pranava, which is known as the Omkara, consisting of three syllables, namely A, U and Ma, <clears throat> that contains everything that needs to be known or said as far as our spiritual life is concerned. So the uh, expansion of the Om is given by the rest of the two words in the Ashtakshara Mahamantra, that is Namaha and Narayanaya. And then the expansion of that Namaha and Narayanaya is the Dvaya Mantra. And the expansion of the Dvaya Mantra is the Karamashloka. So for those who are extremely well versed, even the Pranava is enough. That is why in our tradition, the Yatis or the Sanyasins, it is enough if they actually chant the pranava completely again and again and again and again. Actually, that's a very huge uh, topic as far as the Yoga Shastra is concerned. This is also associated with Yoga Shastra only, not that this is dissociated with Yoga Shastra. And the issue of pranava is very, very important, very, very, it's a huge, huge or mammoth topic rather. <clears throat> because the Upanishads, they uh, speak so much, so highly about the single syllable called Om. And it is equated, the sound itself is equated with the Supreme Lord. Whereas in the Yoga Sutra it says, Tasya Vachakaha Pranavaha. The direct, the syllable or word that directly <coughs> conveys the meaning of the Supreme Lord is the Pranavaha. So it says Ishwara or the Supreme Lord is conveyed by the word by the syllable Omkara or Pranava. That is why Patanjali in his Yoga Sutra says Tasya Vachakaha Pranava. And further he says the Japa of the Pranava has to be done continuously. So the Pranava has been accorded the best maximum maximum status and it is equated with the Supreme Lord Himself. Though there is the relationship of the word and its meaning, it is the meaning and the meant <coughs> between these two, 
it is also equated. So there is no difference between the Supreme Lord and Pranava in a particular state, state of consciousness that is mentioned in the uh, Vyakarana Shastra by the great uh, yogi called Bhartrihid, which I am not going to write now because that's a huge, huge topic and not too much relevant now. It is relevant as far as we say that the Pranava is the mantra that encompasses all the meanings that a person who, who wishes to attain liberation <clears throat> needs to know. So the expansion of Pranava is Namo Narayanaya. And the expansion of Namo Narayanaya is the Dvaya Mantra. And the expansion of the Dvaya Mantra is the Charamashtoka. And this is very beautifully explained by <clears throat> Parashara Bhattar in this shloka. I will not go into the detailed explanation because that is going to come in future in the sutras itself. He says, Deha Sattatma Buddhiri Yadi Bhavati Padam Sadhu Vidyatritiyam Swatantriyandho Yadi Syate Prathama Mitarashe Shatvadhishche Dvitiyam Atmatranon Mukhashte Namaitita Padam Bandhava Pasano Raha Atmatranon Mukhashte Namaitita Padam Bandhava Pasano Dasha Narayanakim Vishaya Japadhi Chaturthim Prasannaha. So the entire meaning of the Ashtakshara Mahamantra is very beautifully uh, concisely mentioned in this shloka, and also the specific role of each word Om. Namaha, Narayanaya, there also A, U, Ma, etc. How these three have specific meanings, to whom it is targeted, or who should target, which type of a person should lay emphasis on which of those syllables. Then once again, the focus of the word Namaha, who should focus on Namaha? What is the focus of the word Narayanaya? And in Narayanaya also you have the Chaturthi Bhakti suffix are the deity case suffix. So what that means, etc. So <clears throat> it means, to put it in a nutshell, it means that there are several types of adhikaris or aspirants. Some persons have overcome, may have overcome their illusion that this body itself is the soul. Or some person may be still under the illusion like all of us who still think or who, who still feel that the body itself is the soul but have not realized that they are distinct from each other. <clears throat> and even if a person has realized that he, he may think that he is independent and he can accomplish everything on his own, then what he has to do? And if a person feels that I am my own savior, I need not go to anybody else, then what should he do? And there are, there might be some people who feel that, who have a lot of mamakara in the sense that they are unable to give up their belongings or give up their inclination towards their belongings, then what they should, which is the word they should focus upon. So the Ashtakshara Mahamantra or the Tirumantra, as it is known, is a comprehensive remedy for all those who are bit or bitten by the <coughs> snake called samsara. That is what is mentioned in another context. So this mantra comprehensively addresses all the issues a samsari or a bonded soul faces in his life. And <coughs> how to overcome that, for that what he has to do. That is what is mentioned in the Ashtakshara Mahamantra. Therefore, it is accorded the premier most status. It is called as Mantra Raja. And as I mentioned, it is the it is this mantra that is further elaborated by the Dvaya Mantra and also the Thermashtoka. Therefore, it is mentioned in the beginning. That's what Swami Manavada Mahamanikan says. I will just read out the Pankhi. Ini Engararahas Yatrayatilum 
பிரதம ரகசியம் ஏதென்னும் ஆகாஞ்சையில் அருளிச் செய்கிறார் அதில் பிரதம ரகசியம் திருமந்திரம் என்று அதாவது அந்த ரகசியத்திரயத்திலும் வைத்து கொண்டு இவ்வதிகாரிக்கு பிரதமம் ஜாதவியரமாம ரகசியம் ஸ்வரூபயாதாத்மியபரமா பரமா இத்தியாஜோபாதே விபாகத்தை பரிபூர்ணமாக பிறப்பிக்கு மதான திருமந்திரம் எங்கை there is one more very important aspect that needs to be noted here it is that the most <coughs> important thing a person needs to know is that what are the do's and don'ts so that's what it says tyajya upade vibhag jnana a person undergoes bondage because he does not know why he has come under bondage so it is very important to know suppose in this birth a person has some particular disease so why does he have that disease is the question the dharma shastra say janmantara kritam paapam vyadhi roopena baadhate in this particular birth if a person has a particular disease it means that that disease is a result of the sins that he has committed in his previous births so what does he have to do in the indian tradition we have i will not go into that that's a huge huge topic once again because categorization of diseases is done only in the indian tradition the diseases as are categorized as sadhya asadhya dussadhya etc means certain diseases can be cured by the remedies certain diseases can never be cured by remedies we come across several people say we tried all sorts of remedies like allopathy ayurveda homeopathy and naturopathy and several other things but the disease has not subsided it means that such a disease is called as asadhya roga it cannot be cured because it is the fruit of it is the result of a karma of a particular karma that has been committed in the previous births and among diseases also there are certain diseases that can be cured by medicine and there are certain diseases that cannot be cured by medicine that is why it is said tachantihi aushadhaihi danaihi japa homa surarchanai so it's a five pronged attack to overcome the disease that is some diseases can be overcome by medicine some diseases by can be overcome by charity how this is possible can be proved scientifically that i am not going to write now so by charity by japa like of the ashtakshara then homa that is offering giving offerings in the fire and then surarchana so worshiping particular deities for particular but possess especially overcome the overcoming diseases so dhanvantri is nothing but a form of vishnu so many a times dhanvantri homa is prescribed or dhanvantri japa is prescribed to overcome certain diseases similarly other deities may also be worshiped as far as the overcoming of diseases alone are concerned <clears throat> so it is said that chant hi aushadai hi danai hi tapa ho surarchana so this is how it is as far as the indian tradition is concerned so a person has to and especially as far as this samsara or bondage is concerned this bondage is also the result of our previous karmas and also the non realization of the supreme brahman had not having the sakshatkara or the direct vision of the supreme lord therefore one has to understand that he is not an independent person he in the sense this soul is not independent it is totally dependent 
it is totally subservient to the supreme lord and he alone can actually liberate this soul from the bonds of samsara this is very important so all these things are actually mentioned by the tirumantra therefore the tirumantra of the ashtakshara mahamantra has been accorded the premier most place that is why it is also called as the mantra raja of the king among mantras and further anuvala mamuni says <coughs> This is very important. This is a very important point. So Manavala Mamani says, this is called as a, what is the meaning of a mantra? The <clears throat> etymological derivation of the mantra word mantra is as follows mantaram trayate iti mantra that entity which protects the person who constantly concentrates upon it is known as mantra so mantra is a person who constantly concentrates upon a particular particular uh, mantra or particular form of a word or sentence. So such a person is manta. So manta aram trayate. So that which protects the manta or the concentrator or contemplator rather is known as mantra. That means when a person constantly contemplates on a particular <clears throat> mantra, it might be Gayatri Mantra, it might be Ashtakshara Maha Mantra, it might be Daya Mantra, it might be Sudarshana Mantra, it might be Narasimha Mantra, or so many other innumerable mantras. Innumerable in the sense, there are several works in the Indian tradition like Mantra Mahodadhi. Mantra Mahodadhi means a huge ocean of mantras. So, that which protects the contemplator is known as mantra. Protects from what, etc., is to be explained later. How does it protect? What is the methodology, or what is the means, or what is the modus operandi in which it protects? So, Manavana Mahani answers this question. Shabda Shaktiyalam Artha Bodhanattalam Tanne Yanusam Dippark Rakshakamahayale. So there are two ways in which mantras protect <coughs> their contemplators. <coughs> which are the two means? One is Shabda Shakti and another is Artha Bodhana Shakti. So what is meant by Shabda Shakti? <coughs> Shabda Shakti is, they don't worry about the meaning. They worry about the sound value only. So I will just give an example for this. And even Swami Vedanta Deshika has given a very beautiful example. So he has given a highly traditional example. He says, when a person, when a young Brahmin boy he is initiated into the Upanayana Samskara or initiated by the Upanayana Samskara, at the age of eight, he has not yet completed eight years. So he is taught to go. He used to be, not nowadays, <laughs> of course, because that, was, uh, that practice is not prevalent now. It disappeared several years, several thousands of years ago. But earlier we understand from our forefathers or from the earlier literature that <clears throat> at the age of seven and a half, that is, it is known as Garbhashtama, before the age of eight, a Brahmin boy has to be initiated into the Upanayana Samskara. The sacred thread is <clears throat> given to him and he is initiated into the Gayatri Mantra. And from then onwards, he has to go to the Gurukula and study the Vedas and the Angas for about 16 years. And uh, during that time, he should actually beg for arms from different houses in the vicinity. 
so when he has to do so <coughs> so what what do what should he say he should say bhavati bhiksham dehi oh lady please provide me with arms that is what he has to say but the boy is not taught the exact meaning of the words their case endings whether it is in singular plural or dual whether it is in nominative not nominative case or accusative case or whatever it is and whether in the whether the uh, root or what is the root of the word dehi what is the suffix whether it is present tense past tense imperative mood potential mood etc he is just start to go to the house of a person and of course which type of a person should be which type of a house should be approached that is specifically mentioned and there he has to address the woman of the household and ask bhavati bhiksham dehi as soon as he mentions these three words the woman of the house will come and offer the alms to alms is a l m s i'm sure all of you are uh, familiar with the word alms it is a l m s so swami vedanta deshika says even though the boy does not know any, the exact meanings of the words their derivations their grammatical uh, aspects as soon as he goes before the house of a household or a grihastha and approaches or addresses the woman of the house and says bhavati bikshan de he will get the arms so his aspirations are fulfilled that is he has to satisfy his hunger so he gets the arms he comes home and eats it so his hunger is satiated and his day is done similarly by when we call shabda shakti so when the mantras give meaning by means of shabda shakti it means one need not know what is the meaning they have to just go and mention go not go just mention or chant again and again and again the mantra even without knowing their meaning just they have to continuously chant the meaning so we have a very classical story example of a story where it is mentioned that of course we don't have any very authentic evidence it is mentioned that valmiki who maharshi valmiki who authored the ramayana in his earlier life he was a bandit and he used to rob people of their belongings at that time the seven sages of the saptarshis happened to pass by and not going to the story all of you know it or you may read it elsewhere so it is mentioned that this is mentioned in this manner that they asked him to chant continuously the mantra mara not even rama so he started saying mara 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 it it became rama 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 and ultimately he became a great sage he became a realized soul he had the vision of the supreme lord he had the vision of rama and that is how he wrote the rama so he never knew what the meaning of rama is he never even knew the word rama properly <clears throat> so even though a person does not know the meaning of a word by chanting it continuously he acts he gains the fruits that are acquired by chanting them so if ordinary words have such power what of the great mantras like the ashtakshara mantra so without knowing the meaning itself by the by what is known as the shabda shakti <clears throat> one can attain the one can attain protection of the mantra or protection from the protection he becomes protected by the mantra rather that is for whom that is for upasakas and <clears throat> the means is japa and homa so ashtakshara mahamantra japa every day all of us have to do all this devotion has to do apart from that <clears throat> it is also advised to do homa also if possible but this is as far as this 
this issue shabda shakti and arth shakti is concerned it is universally mentioned that the upasakas just they are not worried about the meaning at all by the sound value itself by performing japa and homa they they are they acquire they attain the required fruits of this sense <coughs> but as far as prapannas are concerned they are not only of course even those persons who are interested in the sound value they need not ignore the artha shakti or meaning and those who are interested in the meaning they need not ignore the shabda shakti or the sound value both can have both of them but here the means is specifically mentioned that as far as prapannas are concerned those who are sharanagatas the shri vishnu those who have taken the shri vishnu diksha they are interested in the artha shakti or the meaning of the mantra along with the shabda shakti and the prapannas what they have to do they have to surrender to the supreme lord as the sole means to attain liberation so as i mentioned earlier what is prapatti or sharanagati it is tameva upaya bhuto me bhava iti prarthana matihi sharanagati hi to surrender to the supreme lord as the sole means to attain liberation so you have to with your from the heart of hearts you have to plead with the lord saying that you alone are the means for me to attain liberation i don't have any other means anyatha sharanam nasti tameva sharanam mama so that is what is the means that a person becomes protected by the ashtakshara mahamantra so that is by artha shakti so manavala mamani says by means of shabda shakti and by means of artha shakti the upasakas of course upasakas may also be prapannas prapannas may also be upasakas or both but from, when we see from a different angle they are they seem to be different so the upasakas are interested in the shabda shakti and they do japa homa they will attain the same fruit prapannas are interested in the artha shakti or the meaning of the mantra and they surrender to the supreme lord as a soul means to attain the prayer and then attain the required or desired fruits so this is how a mantra protects a person who chants it as mentioned until now that is what manavala mamni mentions beautifully so we go to the next slide that is the third sutra before that one more aspect needs to be mentioned as far as the second sutra is concerned shabda shakti ale rakshakamam japa homa rihadare karyam kullum upasakarku artha shakti artha bodhanatale rakshakamam ishwarane upayam yendirkum prapannarku and then the shloka is explained artha bodhanatale rakshakamahayavade deha saktaatma buddhi etc and then he says in the bhatta rudichaida padiye tannai anusandhippark dehaatma abhimanamum swatantrimam anya sheshatvam swarakshane swanmayamum abandhu sangamam vishaya pravanyamum melidada padipanni swaroopo swaroopadurupamah swaroopadurupamah nadakkum padino kuhai so the <coughs> which are the impediments that prevent the individual soul or jivatma from engaging in the <coughs> means of liberation that is ashtakshara mahamantra etc so manavala mamani actually gives a list of these things he says dehaatma abhimanam swatantrim anya sheshatvam these three we have covered earlier swarakshane swanvayam this is very important aspect as far as the shri vaishnava uh, siddhanta or the shri vaishnava tradition is concerned 
Swarakshane Swamnayam Kudadi. A person should not even attempt to protect himself. This is well illustrated by a very beautiful story that has been narrated in our tradition. So we have to absorb the essence of the tradition. We should not go into the nitty gritty of the story. We should absorb the essence of the story. So once it is mentioned that in Vaikuntha, the Lord Narayana, as we all have read and also seen many pictures, of course we have not realized that within ourselves, <coughs> he was actually sleeping and sleeping on his serpent couch, the Adishesha, and Goddess Mahalakshmi, the Supreme Goddess Mahalakshmi was actually <coughs> tending to his feet. So immediately, all of a sudden, the Lord Narayana ran away without informing Lakshmi, without even telling her where he is going. And he went so fast that nobody could even say why he is going or even guess what he was doing. And then immediately, a few moments afterwards, he just came back as fast as he had proceeded and he actually slept as he was doing earlier. Then it seems that Goddess Mahalakshmi <coughs> asked Lord, the Lord Narayana, what happened? Oh Lord, what happened? Why did you suddenly leave this place and go so fast? You ran away so fast that we could not even fathom why you are doing this. Then the Lord said, no, no, you please listen to me. A very interesting episode occurred. A well dressed Vaishnava, a Kanta Lagna Tulasi Nalina Akshamala, a Bahutin, a Bahumula Paritin Hita Shanka Chakraha, a Valalata Palake Lasadurja Pundraha, a Vaishnava Bhuanam Mashupa Vitrain, the Bahya Lakshana, the external features of a Vaishnava are mentioned as follows. <coughs> Ye kantalakda tulasi nalina akshamala. So, yes, Vaishnava, Rashi Vaishnava has to sport the <coughs> akshamala and tulasi nalina akshamala, the garlands made out of the beads of tulasi, manis are tulasi beads and the lotus beads. And ye bahu mole parichinita shankha chakra. They should also have. The Samashrena or the Shankha Chakrankana, Shankankana and Chakrankana, as it is done in the Panta Samskaras. Eva Lalata Parake Rasad Urdhva Pundra. And those who sport the Urdhva Pundra are the upward <coughs> chinhas on their foreheads, they are the Vaishnavas. This is the external Lakshana. Of course, internal Lakshana will be mentioned many times, and it is already being mentioned so many times. So such a Vaishnava who was well dressed as a Vaishnava, such a person was actually providing in an area where people in a street where predominantly people belonging to other religions were there. So naturally what happens when a, what we call as a black sheep or a person who is totally alien to that area comes people become agitated. So, and those people were probably belong to the fanatic uh, religions, which I don't want to name. No, we have <laughs> a very fanatic or a few fanatic, uh, fanatic religions, which actually say people belonging to other religions should be killed without any discrimination or distinction. So, <clears throat> So they started to abuse him and they also were about to hit him with stones. Then that person said, Oh Narayana, please protect me. I have no other protector. So Lord Narayana mentioned to Goddess Lakshmi, So since he called me, Oh Lord Narayana, please come and protect me. 
I thought immediately it is my duty that I should go and protect him. So without informing you, I ran so fast to protect him. Then Goddess Mahalakshmi asked, and did you protect him? Why did you come back so fast? Then Lord Narayana mentioned, No, no, I, as I was about to go and protect him, as I was about to reach and protect him, by that time, he had also taken a stone and he was about to hit his attackers with that stone. Then I thought, I have nothing to do here after. So my, my, my job is done. So I will not go and protect him and I came back. So the essence of the story is Swarakshane Swarnayam Kuda If you think that you can protect yourself, then he will not come and protect you. So you have to actually surrender before the Supreme Lord by all means. Kayena, Vacha, Manasa. Not only by just by your lips. Don't pay only lip service by your body and by also your mind. By your mind, body and speech. These are called the three karanas. So by all these three means, you have to surrender to the Supreme Lord. And you should never even have the minutest of inclinations that you can protect yourself or you should also not even put in a, even a symbolic effort to protect yourself. Only then the Supreme Lord will come and protect you. So, according to the Sri Vaishnava tradition, Swarakshane Swamvaya is a great sin. Swarakshane Swamvaya. So, if a person tries, even tries to protect himself, then that is a great sin. And the Lord will give up his sankalpa, his resolution to protect that person. And he has to be on his own. So, this is very important aspect. So that's what Manavala Mamani says here. Swarakshane Swamnayamam. And then he says Abandhu Sangamam. Vishaya Pravanyam. Abandhu Sangam means he should not actually engage or have any relationship with those who are Nastikas or who are the non believers, which will actually land him in great trouble. And he will also be not, not protected by the Ashtaks in the Then Vishaya Pravanyamam. He should not indulge in objects of sensual pleasures. That is also very important. So, within the framework of dharma, whatever pleasures he can enjoy, he is definitely entitled to do that. But if he indulges in vishaya pravanyamum, so pravana means one who indulges. So, vishaya pravanya means if he indulges in the objects of the senses, then definitely he cannot be protected. So these are the things that he has to give up, which are included in the do's and don'ts. All these are conveyed by the Ashtakshara Mahamantra, the Thiru Mantra that we are actually <coughs> studying now. So it says, Me ridada paripanni swarupa narupa maha nadakkum padito nokuhai. So it will teach him the code of conduct or achara. The Ashtakshara Mahamantra will make the person the perfect human being. His behavior will be perfect. He will be totally subservient to the Lord and his devotees and such other aspects. All these will get imbibed by in him if he actually studies the Ashtakshara Mahamantra and chants as per procedure. So these things are specifically carried out by the Ashtakshara Mahamantra, which is the most, most basic requirement for a person to attain liberation. And therefore, this mantra is accorded the premier most place among all the mantras. Then, with these words, Swami Manavala Mamani concludes the commentary on the second mantra. Then he goes on to the third mantra. Inimel im mantra tanude vaibhavattai vistarena pratipadikya tirulnam bhakti pratham idanudeya Anusandhana Kramakatana Mukattare in Vaibhavatta Yarulikchai Hirat. So hereafter, he says, Swami Pudlaloka Acharya <coughs> will explain the greatness, the exalted nature of this 
Ashtaksara Mahamantra. And therefore, he actually, for that purpose, he says, Prathamam Vidyanudya Anusandhana Krama Kathana Mukattale Idin Vaibhavatta Yarudicca Ihira. So before that, he actually says how this mantra has to be chanted, how it has to be repeatedly, what is known as Anusandhana means repeatedly going over it again and again and again in the mind. That is known as Anusandhana in Sanskrit. So he says, the third mantra, Tirumantra Tanudaya Shir Maikipporum Padi Premattode Peni Anusandhikya Venum One should, the literal meaning is very simple. One should have a great deal of respect and affection towards the Tirumantra befitting its status as the premier most mantra. So I will just give a small example. Suppose so since you all stay in, most of you stay in America, suppose Donald Trump is going to visit. So we all have heard what happens to the place where Donald Trump is going to visit. So for example, when he visited uh, Gujarat or Ahmedabad for that matter, the entire city was sealed, the entire roads that he was supposed to travel were sealed in, in the sense they were not given anybody, nobody was allowed to enter those roads from about 12 hours earlier and 6 to 7 hours after he left the place. <laughs> and the hotel where he stayed, the entire hotel and all the surrounding buildings are taken over by the secret service. And it is said that nearly 2000 or 3600 secret service agents without revealing their identity, came there and they took over the place and all those things. So, the United States is supposed to be the premier most superpower in the world today. <clears throat> and if the President of the United States is coming, the welcome should be befitting the President of the United States. That's what we say. Or suppose the Indian Prime Minister is visiting some place. What happens to a place? We all know. It is similar to what happens when Donald Trump visits a place. So here also it says, Tirumantratnudiya shir maiki porumpadi premattode peniyanu sandhikya venum So the love a person should show for the Tirumantra should be befitting its status. So, what are the, what is the status of the Tirumantra? It says, Racho yajum shi samani tathaiva pruvanani cha sarvam ashtaksharam tastham ipcham yadapivang mayam This is what Ashtashtoki says. So, Racho yajurveda, yajurveda, samaveda and atharvanaveda. All these things are concisely mentioned in the Ashtaksara Mahamantra. And Yacha Anyadapi Vangmayam, every other literature that is associated with spirituality, that is associated with the Indian tradition, be the Itihasas, Puranas, Smriti Granthas, etc., all these things. They are <coughs> Sarvam Ashtaksharantastham. All these are contained in the Ashtaksara Mahamantra. And the third reference that Swami Manavad Mahabali quotes is <coughs> from the Vishwaksera Samhita of the Pancharat Ragama. It says, Mantranam Paramo Mantraha. It is the superior most mantra of all the mantras. Guhyanam Gutta Guhya Muttanam. It is the secret, secretest mantra of all the secrets, of all the secret mantras. Secretest of the secret, best of the best, or the best among the best, etc. So, how many superlatives itself you use? It is not enough. Pavitran Pavitranam, the most sacred of this sacred mantra. 
and that is mula mantra sanatana and so i want to mamani also quotes one verse from trivai muni which is mattellam teshiram ninjira padiye and that i will actually explain in the next class so <clears throat> it is said one who chants the tiru mantra should not be a dry hearted person he should be very passionate he should have great regard and passion for this mantra he should ensure that it does not fall into the wrong, wrong hands i will explain this later and it should be chanted as per procedure only the, these are very very very, very important aspects which we will actually study in the next class i will just mention the pankties of manavana mamuni and conclude this time <clears throat> ृत्युष्टाक्षरास मत्तल नाम पेशिलम इंगिरे पड़िए न्यातव्य सकलार तत्प्रतिपाद कमाई All that that needs to be known is <coughs> included in the Tiru Mantra and Mantra नाम परमो मंत्रह गुह्या नाम गुह्या मुत्तमम पवित्रंच पवित्रा नाम मूला मंत्र सनातना इंगिरे पड़िए मंत्रंगलिल वैतिक कुंडु परम मंत्र माई अड़वि शुष्क हृदयुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंदुसंद
So we say if a person actually immerses himself in the Ganga Nadi or the river Ganges or the Yamuna Nadi or the river Yamuna, the sins are washed off. If I think, oh, this is all some uh, humbug or something that is cooked up by some people, definitely he will, his sins will not be washed off. Similarly, Mantre, Tirthe, Dvijay, with regard to Brahmins. Brahmins means not those who are born in the Brahmin community, but those who are the Brahma Jnanis or who have had the divine vision of the Supreme God. Such a person is known as Brahma, Brahmana or Dvija. And Daive in, in God and Daivatnya with regard to the astrologer. Once again, this is another very hugely controversial topic. But in those days, such astrologers used to exist who could actually guide the people properly. Astrology is not about predicting the future in an exact way, but only guiding the person properly with regard to certain issues that may occur in the future. These are all to be explained in great detail. I will not go into it because it is not directly related to this class. So astrology is one very controversial topic, but today more and even as science grows and rationalists increase in the world, more and more people are thronging to astrology also. So mantra, dhirte, vijay, daive, daivatni and bheshaje as far as the doctor is concerned also. Unless you have faith in the doctor, the disease will not cure. If you say, what is this bloody doctor going to give? What is he going to cure? Then definitely the disease will not be cured. And similarly with regard to Guru also, the Acharya also. So with regard to these seven aspects or persons or things, the result obtained depends on the mentality or disposition you have towards that. Therefore, you have to have, if you have utmost regard, utmost respect, etc. for Itiru Mantra, automatically you will be revolved according to that. So, that is what should be the dispensation of a person, of an aspirant of liberation towards the Mantra. Not only to the Mantra, with regard to all these seven, which is not mentioned in this concept, in this context. So it says, Tiri Mantra Tanudaya Shir Maitya Porum Padi Premato De Peni Anusandhikya Venum So this is the meaning of this mantra as explained by Manuala Bhavani. So here I conclude this talk. So questions are welcome. Or interaction, observation <coughs> Swami Namaskaram. Just wanted to ask, with respect to the first, I mean, sorry, the last part that you mentioned about chanting should be by procedure only, which I know you say you're going to explain later, but does that mean that one can chant Tiru Mantra all the time, constantly throughout the day? Is it that one has to sit and do Nyasa and Achman, etc., before one chants the mantra? Is that what you're saying? Or can one just continuously chant Tiru Mantra? I know it's more recommended Dwaya Mantra, but can one not just also just chant it through mantra like that throughout the day? As per procedure, along with the Anganyasa and Karanyasa, you have to chant it <coughs> at least twice or thrice a day. But other than that, continuous repeated chanting mentally is allowed at all times. Uh. <coughs> so it depends on your dispensation. So suppose you feel you are unclean, for example, suppose when you are using the washroom, it you are not supposed to do. But suppose it comes voluntarily, then there is nothing wrong in that also. This has been specifically <laughs> discussed. So even if a person thinks about God when he is in the washroom also, there is nothing wrong. Because even at that time, if he is thinking about God, or if the thoughts of God come to him, what is wrong in that? But Perfect. as per procedure, when he is supposed to, after taking bath, etc., then he, so the rule or the, uh, what is laid down is he has to do after bath every day twice, uh, in the morning and in the evening. Other than that, every day, all the times he is ready, he is most welcome to do. There is nothing wrong in that. 
but that is informal this is formal both are accepted both are valid very good the, the next thing is um with respect to the statement about if one has the idea that one can protect himself or tries to even protect himself that the lord will give up all protection um first of all how do we actually put that into practice in a, the world that we live in today are we are you saying that if someone is going to attack you you know physically or something you wouldn't try to protect yourself you would just chant the tur mantra and then take take the blows and the other thing is that how does that correlate to ram charama shloka where the lord says to vasmi teach ya chati that you know once one says i am yours he will always give you a protection no matter what so how can he ever withdraw that protection a uh, protection so the story you have to understand the spirit of the story so protection is of two types one is spiritual protection and one is physical protection so as far as mantras and all these things we are predominantly talking about the spiritual life so <clears throat> when you actually surrender that means so this is another very 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 important and very subtle question because once you surrender even do you have to also chant the mantra even that is not required so many people think we have become prapannas we have already surrendered so why why chant the mantra also so many people many shivaishnava acharyas also say no no even chanting is prohibited it is totally incorrect according to me even according to my acharya <clears throat> so protection as far as protecting your atma or protecting your soul is concerned in that aspect you should that actually what happens when swaswarupa jnana occurs that will automatically happen so you will never think that you can protect yourself if you know who you are actually <laughs> so many times what happens one aspect covers all the other aspects but when we have to understand it from our mind through our mind then we have to mention it separately so as far as our spiritual protection or the protection of the atma or the individual soul of the jivatma is concerned there once you actually surrender then you will never think i can protect, i can manage on me because when you say when you say you can manage on your own that is the gnana mark that i will take care of myself that is why we have the markata kishore nyaya and the marjara kishore nyaya it is the uh, analogy given between the gnana mark and the bhakti mark okay oh. i i am not sure whether you have heard about those two nyayas or the analogies yes is about the mm mm-hmm. karan so uh, if you have heard about it i will not repeat it or if you have not heard about it i will mention it about it in, about it in this class this yes, is about the monkey and the kitten Yes, Basically. the marketer, the analogy of the monkey and its mother, and the analogy of the cat and its mother. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it will be beneficial for others listening. Yeah. So next class I will explain it. Okay. Um. So, but would you say that on a practical basis, though? Okay, we understand so, totally so, the physical, physical issue. Physical issue yes. is a big problem. It's not so easy, but. i would like to very emphatically say if a person has really really surrendered physically also mm-hmm. then definitely god will take care we have several yes. stories or uh, instances that are mentioned in our earlier works to say that even physical physically also the god will take care supreme lord will take care even if a person uh, he says if he is really 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 surrendered himself and says today i will not go out to eat if i am destined to eat if the lord wants me to eat the food will come to me definitely it will come but he has to have that degree of devotion and uh, dedication yes. mahavishwasam then yes mahavishwasam yes. it's not uh, but we cannot express it in words to be really honest but but can we ever really say that he will remove his protection that like if if we haven't had that full realization as yet that we will say okay just like you mentioned that if you think that you could protect yourself then he will remove his protection and that's it yes of you course 
we have, we have, see, suppose uh, you ask the Prime Minister to do something and he has given you, yes, I will look after this matter. Then after you go to the Prime Minister and you tell, you approach uh, the local uh, policeman or something for the, for the same issue. What will the Prime Minister say? Oh, already, if, you, if the thing is resolved by the local policeman, then why, why should you ask me? I will not do. I will not help. Okay. Then, even with regard, you, you take a person like me. I am a no, nobody as far as the world is concerned. But suppose uh, my uh, younger cousin or somebody comes and asks me for help, then I say, okay, I'll help you. Then he goes and asks say, another young boy to help him for the same thing. Then what will I say? If your young friend is uh, able to help you, then why, why do you bring me into the picture? <laughs> mm -hmm. Then uh, then I'll not do it. I'll withdraw from it. I'll not help. I, uh, I am no longer prepared to help you. You not say it. So when, it is, if, this, when that is the case with an ordinary person, then what is, the, was it, what is it with regard to the Supreme Lord? That is why I mentioned, Supreme Lord, though he has no weaknesses, no doshas, etc., he also has some expectation. That is why I mentioned the instance of Putana, as I mentioned, as it comes in the Bhagavatam, and as it was explained by Vedanta Deshika. You were present in the previous class? No, I missed the previous one, but I already listened to it. So yeah, I was mentioning Ananya Arhatva is very important. So Putana came and offered her uh, milk. She said it was for the sake of Krishna and Krishna alone. Mm -hmm. So Krishna partook and he said he will grant it her moksha because Stanyam Tad Vishasam Mishram Rasyam Asi He greatly enjoyed it because it was meant, meant for him and him only, not for anybody else. So such a thing is greatly enjoyed, and I explained it in great detail when we offer fruits, etc., how it is offered. So Ananya Rathva is one very important expectation of the Lord with regard to us. <laughs> yeah, that that makes all the sense. Um, and that uh, that also gave me the realization why property is also only once. You can only offer to him your, yourself only once, even though you, you can't really offer yourself because um, you already belong to him anyway. You yes. know, but that, that proves again the property is only once because you've, you've made it so clear that you cannot offer something to him twice in yes. that. It doesn't make any sense. But um, it seems also with respect to that last point that it's all up to the consciousness that even though your consciousness might be at one time that you could have protected, but the minute you do take up that consciousness again that actually I cannot protect myself, the Lord will resume that position, isn't it? He, he will reciprocate with that, that you are helpless and you are taking his shelter. Yes. The, the, the other thing is about the, the Upasakas and the Prapannas and Artha Shakti and the Shabda Shakti. Um, is it that you say both of them go hand in hand or would you say that the Artha Shakti yes, is yes, higher? Yes, yes. yes. Prapannas are higher but that is why I said even if a person uh, concentrates on the meaning he cannot give up the word because the word and meaning are so closely connected. So, would so you say that even, okay. I said, even though he may not realize the meaning, the word itself will give the required fruits or results. If he does both, it is all the more best, all the more the better. And one cannot neglect the other, though he may not focus on them. And would you say also that for one who doesn't know the meaning, if he simply constantly chants, the benefit of it is that the meaning, the realization of the meaning will come. Yes, yes, That's the other yes. benefit. Yes. And is it that you're also saying that even for prapannas, that prapannas should also do japa and homa with the mantra, even though they yeah, more that, want that to meditate and concentrate on the mantra? That is why Yunamanda Acharya says, Bhagavad, uh, it will all result in Bhagavad Preeti or Bhagavad Kainkari. Bhagavad Kainkari Rupa, if you do, there is nothing. You can do all the things that you wish as the Bhagavad Kainkari. I will give a very simple uh, uh, example, don't mistake me. Suppose I come to your house and see you looking at you if I say idiot. <laughs> Can you mm -hmm. don't mistake me. Will you get angry or not? I don't know what is the meaning of the word idiot. Right. But will I get the result that is you, your yes. anger? 
upon me. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a very, that's a very good mind. example. So, <laughs> that is in a negative way. So in a positive way, this happens. <laughs> That's a very good example. And you were mentioning last time about then that still even for Papandas, one has to do Purascharana of the mantra. So is it that later on you'll explain to us that how one is supposed to do that and why is Papandas we are supposed to do that? If, if it is that we are... Oh, no, it, um, it, like, it is like this. Papandas cannot help not doing it. Automatically they will indulge in that. So it's not mm -hmm. that you are actually... Ordaining or ordering a person. So we call it as Ragat of Prapta in Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. In Sanskrit, in the Shastras, especially in the Mimamsa Shastra, there is an example. So, is there any rule in the constitution that if a person is hungry, he should consume food? Mm. Should the government make a rule like that? I, I don't think so. <laughs> Because it's, it's the instinct, it is yeah, human it's instinct. natural. Yeah, it is human instinct that a person consumes food if he is hungry. Even a young child cries for food when it is hungry. Yes. So this is known as ragata prapta or instinctual. So for instinctual aspects, there is no rule or any constitutional order is not required or the court order is not required. Yes. So similarly, a prapanna when he becomes when he surrenders to the Lord. He will do all sorts of things like mantra, trivara, or whatever it is, depending upon his own dispensation. To the Supreme Lord, voluntarily. Or when in a, high, in a higher stage, involuntary. Without he himself knowing also, he will be doing everything associated with the Lord himself. So at that time, it becomes instinctual, like eating, having food, etc. But Prapanna should do like this, Prapanna should do like that. There is no, no need of an order or no need of any instruction to do that. And thank you very much. I wanted to ask one more thing that um, we were discussing uh, just this week, myself and Keshava Swami, and um, it was asked also to Dr. Tirunarayanan. It's with respect to Bhakti Yoga and Prapati that we read in many books that bhakti yoga is only for male trivarnikas from a from a shri vaishnava point of view um, whereas we see from other sampradayas like for instance the gorya sampradaya and other sampradayas bhakti yoga they say is highest and it's for everyone to perform bhakti yoga why does the shri vaishnavas only say that it's for male trivarnikas that they alone can perform um, bhakti yoga Whereas that everyone else should do prapatti. No, I'm not, I'm not, I don't agree with that view. Where is it mentioned that only Trayvarnika should do bhakti yoga? Oh, well, we've it in, um, read it in different books. Um, but Thank maybe... You, uh, please give me the reference, then I will see and do it. Because I'm, okay. I don't, I'm not familiar with such a view. So okay, please give great. me that uh, reference, I'll see and do it. Okay, I'll, I'll do. Maybe Keshava Swami may have some... Um, that that point also yeah, know, of other I, know, I, don't think, I don't think it is mentioned uh, specifically anywhere that yes. bhakti yoga is only for trayvarnikas. Because Krishna himself doesn't say that in in oh, Bhagavad Gita. Where, where it, well, I'm reading one book by um, uh, Doctor Uma Kantam right now, and he mentions that in his no, introduction. No, no, I, also. I want the original, the original verse. I'm, I don't. Uh, or, yeah, that's the thing. I can't find a pramana of it, but apparently that's what I've right. also heard. Keshava Swami, you have any other? We, we cannot uh, rely on some, some person, Sumakantam or XYZ, to answer okay. that question. Uh, okay, if there perfect. is any specific pramana that is authentic or acceptable, then I can answer that question. Okay, perfect. If you Thank you very view, much. You know, because even uh, I, I don't subscribe to the view, I, because I am not Tamatras at the view anyway. Okay. Thank you very much. If, if anybody else most has welcome, any questions. Most welcome. Most welcome, most welcome for the interaction. Swami, so, thank you very much. I think we kept you for a long time. Um, I had a few questions, but maybe some other time or... Well, we can have one, one question answer session itself probably on a Friday night or something like that. 
Right. If you are free, then we can have it next Friday night. You please uh, let me know appear itself. Yeah, one one you quick one quick one quick one uh, though. I just wanted to know because it seems that uh, one should not chant. You, you said one should not chant your mantra loudly. That is uh, no. It's not like that. There is uche uh, mantras can be chanted in three types: uchehi, upamshu, and manasam. Yes. So Uchehi is uh, loudly, Upamsho is like whispering, you may see only the lip movement, not hear it, and then Manasam is totally mentally chanting. I'll explain it in another uh, next uh, another session. But it's very important. Uh, we, we will uh, discuss that separately. Mm. So to just so all, three uh, of, all three methods of chanting are there. They are mm. they are allowed. But when etc. that we have to discuss. Right. I think uh, we need some more time because I wanted to ask about the fact that you said you defined as mantra as that which protects the person. But then we also say that we shouldn't seek protection. You shouldn't be a seek, but it, it will automatically protect you. <laughs> <laughs> right. You don't, uh, you don't uh, chant it with the idea of uh, uh, seeking protection, but automatically you will be protected. So we will have another interaction separately where all the questions you can list them and we can uh, discuss probably one separate session we can have. Shri Shaide Shadaya Patram Ji Bhaktyadi Kunarnam Jindra Pranam Mande Ramnigamataram Muni